All right, next up we have Greg Moncada, and he is going to be talking about STEM jobs and how they are the future. And STEM is science, technology, engineering, and math, and that's a topic that's close to my heart since I'm a geek, so I'm looking forward to your talk. <laughs> Let us all discover the inner geek. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, STEM is the future for your children, it's the future of innovation, and it's the future of this nation. And we're already on to the second one. It equals science, technology, engineering, and math. And there's different models of this kind of learning. There's others, science, technology, engineering, and applied math, science, technology, engineering, and art and math. What we know about STEM is that it's a different way of thinking. It's about integrating ideas, helping students understand exactly uh, how to solve problems creatively to answer questions like this. Not your normal multiple choice questions. Why STEM? Why STEM here? Well, over the last decade, we're not really increasing the number of students graduating with STEM degrees. This has a lot of consequences for us, especially internationally. Over the last decade, we have continued to slow down the number of students that are engaging in STEM degrees and therefore less innovation. There's another reason. Our students, this is the Trends in Math and Science survey, and uh, what's happening is that our students are not performing at advanced levels. Fewer and fewer over the years continue to decrease in their, in their advanced ability. Now what this means is that if we have fewer students with college majors and STEM degrees, if we have fewer students uh, uh, performing well, we have less innovation. Despite the fact that having a career in STEM could very possibly mean generational wealth for those kids. There's lots of incentives, and in this last economic downturn, these positions couldn't be filled. So as a review, science, technology, engineering, and math, we have too few students that are going into STEM degrees. We uh, therefore have less innovation, and ultimately, uh, this is really, really at a crisis, and we need to solve ways for uh, innovation. What do we do as a nation? Well, there are national policy documents that suggest that we just abdicate supremacy in manufacturing, that we outsource uh, STEM professionals, but we focus on what we as a country do well, which is to innovate. This message, of course, was not lost on the Bainbridge Island School District or the Bainbridge School Foundation, and they've created a STEM initiative with the express purpose to have more seniors graduate in STEM careers. But how do they do that? Well, first, we know what STEM is not. It took us a while to figure that out. Uh, it's not a set of gadgets. It's not for science and, and uh, math teachers. It's not the answer to the question of the universe, which is? I knew there was a geek factor there. Okay. What we do know is that STEM is learning that's immersive and real and integrated. It asks students to collaborate. It asks students uh, to do things that are challenging, rigorous, and ultimately fun. So we've started this year, and we've done the easy stuff. We have STEM camps, we have math family activity nights, we're doing a lot of grant development, and we're starting with teacher training. What we really need is more data, and what we have learned of the data that we have is that we want more students to be in quadrant two. But we also learned that each different level has its own quadrant with its own solutions and its own goals. It's complicated. And I'll show you what it looks like in high school. If we want to move students from quadrant one to quadrant two, we need to have students with a wider range of courses, with fewer barriers and earlier intervention for learning gaps. From four to two, they need mentors, they need pathways, and they need they actually need you. They need partnerships. They need to meet with STEM professionals. These require relationships. They require training. They require structures. And most of all, they require that teachers get involved. Otherwise, STEM is yet again another educational acronym lost. What are some next steps? Well, we're going to continue with the easy stuff. Clubs, camps, family activity nights. And we're also going to send principals out to look at successful STEM programs in the neighboring districts. We're going to continue to seek grants. And I'm going to continue to look for partnerships. More next steps. We're going to develop a network of STEM professionals. We're going to continue to conduct outreach. 
And above all, you need to get to the STEM blog on the Bainbridge Island School District. I keep you involved by having you know what's going on there as well. Uh, keep you up, up to date with what STEM activities are happening on the island. Thank you. Thank you.